Good morning. If you would take your Bibles and open them up with me to the book of Leviticus, you might notice that we are in a different location. Um, I'm at my house trying desperately to find a quiet place um, where we can do uh, study and we can abide with the Lord. Um, if you are trying to do this in your own life, you're going to find this, especially if you have young children at the house, find it increasingly difficult to find a quiet time. And so the challenge that I'm facing is the same that you probably face. And so we're trying to go through this together. Uh, the world and all of the, the things that distract us in life are closing in on us. But we're trying to find some time during the day where we can quiet, focus on getting to know God, walking with Him. And then from that walk, then we'll know the work that our Heavenly Father wants us to carry out. So um, we took a break last week. We're back in. Now we're in Leviticus chapter 13. Now Leviticus 13 and 14 are all in this same section where we're speaking about purity. Um, not necessarily purity or from sin, but purity that makes us ceremonially unclean so that we have to have some time. There has to be a way uh, to get through either just time or washing or some disease like we're going to see in chapter 13 and 14 to go away. So I wonder, chapter 13 and 14 should be taken together, but they're kind of long for one day, so we're going to split them up into two. They're talking about skin problems, and chapter 13 is going to give us the, the problem, and then chapter 14 is going to give us the the, the problem separates us from worship of God, but then chapter 14 is going to give us the provision to restoration. How can I get back to fellowship with God? So we'll make sure you keep that in mind as we're reading chapter 13, because sometimes it can seem like there is no hope in this chapter. So um, if you haven't already read chapter 13, I would urge you to read it right now. Stop this video and read it, and then we'll come back after prayer and we'll study together. So would you pray with me? Father God, we do thank you for another day. We thank you for the quietness of the moment that we can focus on you. And Father, personally, I, I want to hear you. And as we study these texts of, that were written for the nation of Israel, Father, may we come into a clearer understanding of what the sanctification process that we're in right now is all about. May we look forward to and long for more what's going to happen to us when glorification happens. So Father, help us, instruct us today through your spirit. Give us ears to hear, minds that can understand, and the will that is willing to submit to your way. So help us see your son Jesus Christ in Leviticus today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The focus in chapter 13 and 14 on what's called leprosy, we'll talk a little bit more about that, is not so much on the medical uh, fixes and the medical aspects of these skin diseases, but on the ritual uncleanness. What separates them with this malady from communing with God? So, it's a, a, an important distinction so that we don't get caught up in, well, all the descriptions of quarantine and uh, in a day and age where we're learning more and more about quarantine and uh, 
seemingly sometimes upset at some people because they don't see quarantine the same way as other people see it. Well, this is focused on the tabernacle and worship with God. God is abiding in their presence. Now, how do sinful people come into contact with the holy God? And he's showing them the process of what this looks like. And ultimately, every person would have in, in their lifetime, seemingly, some sort of uncleanness that they would have to work through in the normal courses of life. I want to bring us to the fact of disease. It, it has been, it, the question has been asked at times, why does God allow disease? Um, well, I think it's an important distinction to understand where disease came from. Um, God told Adam and Eve that if they ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, they would die. Now, death, uh, they didn't understand what that was. They knew that it was something that God was saying was bad, but Satan comes and says, you know, you can eat from it and you're not going to die. So there was competing truth claims. However, when they decided to listen to Satan, death entered. But death came in through this slow process. I mean, spiritual death came instantaneous. But the physical death came through this long process of disease and decay and growing pain. And so, especially in this chapter, when we see disease of the skin breaking out, we're going to talk at some length about this being an outward manifestation of the way every person is born. But we'll get to that. I want to take us to the problem and the hope as Paul lays it out in Romans. So go with me very quickly to Romans chapter 5 and verse 12. In Romans 5 verse 12, Paul puts it this way. Therefore, just as through one man sin entered into the world and death through sin, so death spread to all men because all have sinned. This, this problem not only affected mankind, it also affected every part of God's creation. Go with me uh, to Romans chapter 8. Uh, Romans chapter 8. It says this in verse 18, For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to compare with the glory that is to be revealed to us. So as bad as things are right now, there is a promise and a hope of a future without all of this, without disease, without pain, without death. And it says in verse 19, For the anxious longing of the creation waits eagerly for the revealing of the sons of God. For the creation was subject to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself also will be set free from its slavery to corruption into the freedom of the glory of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groans and suffers pains of childbirth together until now. And not only this, but we ourselves having the first fruits of the Spirit, we're in sanctification right now, and that's awesome, but we know that there's, there's still pain, there's still disease. Even we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting eagerly for the adoption as sons, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we have been saved, but in hope that is not seen is not hope. But hope that is seen, excuse me, is not hope. For who hopes for what he already sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, the perseverance, with perseverance, we wait eagerly for it. So understanding disease and understanding the process that the body is in 
you want more understanding of this, you can go to 2 Corinthians chapter 4, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, talking about the resurrection. And will give us a, a more fuller understanding of sickness, disease, and ultimate death. All of these are caused by sin. Where we have to make a clear distinction is if I get a disease, well, I wouldn't have this disease if it was not for sin. However, that doesn't mean that the disease I have is because of some specific personal sin that I have done. It could be, and this is the first thing I should examine. However, just because I'm sick and just because I have a disease doesn't mean it's a result of my own personal sin. Could be, but it could also be just a result of my body going to the uh, extent of working toward death. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4 talks about we, our, our bodies um, being broken and it says as our outer man is decaying, our inner man is being renewed day by day. So through our weakness, God's strength can grow. And I do hope you understand that every day um, we're getting older and every day our bodies are getting weaker. And this should be something that is pointing us to our hope. So in here, all of the ritual for the tabernacle was a mere picture of what was to come. And so what was to come was there would be no sickness, no disease, no death. And so in the picture of that, in the tabernacle, it wasn't allowed in there because it wouldn't be a valid picture of that. Now, this being the case, the theme of, uh, especially 13 and 14, being purity in every aspect of our physical life, there were going to be some people who were excluded, not just for a time, but for their whole lives. Um, sin has severe, severe consequences. And every time we have sickness, every time we have disease, it should really get us, especially as believers, to focus on what is the cause of this and what is the solution to it. Uh, we know that all of this was fulfilled in Jesus Christ. Um, he is the atonement. He is the one who fixes, redeems us. And so th does he redeem us from physical death? And the answer to that is no. He redeems us through physical death. And again, read uh, 1 Corinthians 15 about the resurrection. Um, especially at the end where he's talking about this mortal must put on immortality. Um, death has to be, the sting of death has to be taken away. Why? Because death isn't the end of anything except for my sinful body. And I'm looking forward to that because I will get a glorified body that won't be affected by pain, won't be affected by disease, won't be affected by death. So as we get into this text, we won't go through every verse of it. You've read that and I have read that. So we're going to hit highlights. It's a fairly long chapter. But it begins with, Then the Lord spoke to Moses and to Aaron, saying, When a man has a skin of his body, a swelling or a scab or a bright spot, and it becomes an infection of leprosy on the skin of his body, then he shall be brought to Aaron the priest, or to one of his sons, the priest. And then the priest would examine them. We'll read that in a second. What I want to hone in on is this word leprosy. It's used as a general term here. Um, but generally, we think of the worst case scenario. So it, it would include things like psoriasis, eczema, any kind of skin infection uh, that would come if I cut myself. And we know that the body will clear up that infection. This word leprosy is taking into account all of these things, except for focused on the extent of leprosy here. In its worst case scenario would be an infection 
and there are many different kinds of infection that it includes uh, that would cause death. So there's a distinction being made here and the, the priest is going to be examining, okay, is this infection benign or malignant? Benign meaning it, it can fix itself or malignant meaning that this is going to lead to this person's death. So that's part of it. Second part of it, is this a non-communicable disease or is this communicable? Is this something that can be spread to others or not? Um, that's important. And all of this, we're going to see the safety of the person, the protection for the person who is infected, but also a larger protection of the community so that disease wouldn't run rampant through this uh, nomadic community. So keep that in mind. Um, it's, it's examining every kind of skin malady, making sure that it is not a malignant, contagious disease. And so he goes on, he says, the priest shall look at the mark on the skin of the body, and if the hair in the infection has turned white and the infection appears to be deeper than the skin of his body, it is an infection of leprosy. When the priest has looked at him, he shall pronounce him unclean. We have read different stories in the Old Testament and the New Testament, where if people came into contact with a person who has been infected with full-blown leprosy is they had to scream out before the person got to him, unclean, unclean, unclean. And I think that in this last year and a half, we have understood this in a greater degree with social distancing and things like this, um, maybe more than we've ever in the past. So think through this. Um, the priest Remember, the priest is not uh, a medical doctor. What the priest is concerned with is who can come into the tabernacle, who can commune with God, and who cannot. And God is giving the standard for that. So don't uh, picture uh, the Aaron and his sons, the priest, as the doctor, and they're coming in and uh, getting a diagnosis. That's not what's going on here. This is about ritual purity. Okay, So, in verse 4 it says, If the bright spot is white on the skin of his body, and it does not appear to be deeper than the skin, and the hair on it is not turned white, then the priest shall isolate him who has the infection for seven days. We start to understand this more. Let's see what happens in seven days. And this is a judgment call on Aaron and his sons. And we would think that there would be many times where almost everybody would have to come to the priest and be examined. And for the most part, full-blown leprosy was not a huge problem for Israel. So it would be a very, very rare thing. So the seven days, let's, let's give it seven days. Let's isolate for seven days. Um, if it hasn't changed, uh, come back. And then we'll isolate you for seven more days. If it's faded, you know, if it's only a scab, then you'll be clean. But, in verse 7 says, if the scab spreads further, uh, the end of verse 8, then the priest shall pronounce him unclean. It is leprosy. So it, God is giving them, the Creator is giving them uh, some things to look at to know whether this thing is uh, very, very serious or not. Does some of it refer to medical realities? Yes. Some of this is protecting the community at large, yes. But overall, the purpose of Leviticus and the purpose for this writing is not uh, medical. It's ritual cleanness. Who can come before a holy God? And if we're saying, you say, well, anybody with a disease can't come before God? Yes, because it would ruin the picture. Um, no one can come to God, that's having this, any breakout on the skin was seen as a picture of encroaching death. Remember, life is in the blood and the only thing that's keeping your blood inside of you is your skin. So when your skin starts to be breaking out, it's this seen as death uh, encroaching on the person. And he goes on in verse 10, um, 
describing at the end there is a quick raw flesh in the swelling. So remember any kind of oozing or breaking of the skin raw would mean there is a cut. Um, it is chronic leprosy on the skin of his body. Um, and the priest shall pronounce him unclean. Uh, he shall not isolate him um, for he is unclean if the leprosy breaks out further on the skin and the leprosy covers all the skin of him who has infected from the head to the feet as far as the priest can see. Then the priest shall look and behold, if the leprosy has covered all the body, he shall pronounce him pronounce clean him who has the infection. It has all turned white and he is clean. It's not oozing. The body is taking care of the infection. But who, whenever raw flesh appears on him, he shall be unclean. So just because there, you, you've had some breakout uh, and, and it has a white head on it, we know that that's some sort of infection in the body. Now, mostly the infection, the body will take care of this. And so what they wouldn't do, like teenagers do, if you had a, a pimple, you wouldn't be popping it because if you pop the pimple, you would be unclean, any oozing from the body. And we can understand why this is. The oozing it would cause some contagion that could spread to other people. Now, let's think about some things. I don't want us to get lost in this per se. This is a picture of what's to come. Uh, the future for God's people and the future for the lost world are totally different. The future for God's people, let's look at it. If we go all the way to the end of the Bible, go to Revelation 21. Revelation 21. And in Revelation uh, 21, look with me at verse 22. And I saw no temple in it. This is in heaven. For the Lord God, the Almighty, and the Lamb are its temple. And the city has no need of sun or of the moon to shine on it, for the glory of God has illumined it. And its lamp is the Lamb. The nations will walk by its light, and the king of, kings of the earth will bring their glory into it. In the daytime, for there will be no night there. Its gates will never be closed, and they will bring the glory and the honor of the nations into it. And nothing unclean, and no one who has practiced abomination and lying shall ever come into it, but only those whose names are written in the Lamb's book of life. Only those who have been glorified will be part of this new Jerusalem. Um, the lost world, however, is going to have a, a very different, um, I think Revelation 22, verse 11, we'll look at verse 10 and 11. It, it says, and he said, do not seal up the book, the words of the prophecy of this book, for the time is near. Let the one who does wrong, what? Still do wrong. Let the one who is filthy, still be filthy. But let the one who is righteous, still practice righteousness. Um, and the one who is holy, still keep himself holy. Um, if you go over to verse 15, it talks about, in comparison to this practicing righteousness, to practicing lying. Practicing righteousness, if you want to know more about that, go to the videos on 1 John. The whole first uh, part of 1 John is about practicing righteousness. It's talking about confession of sin. And the practice of lying would be this covering up of our sin. So we're back in chapter 13. Um, the New Testament, you say, what does this have to do with us today? Well, the New Testament is still very concerned with how we treat our bodies. In 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and in James chapter 5, it talks about our bodies being the temple of God. So that being true, how should I treat God's temple? Because there are things that I could do that could make my time in this temple, this time on earth where I should be God's ambassador furthering his kingdom, I could cut that time short by things that I do in treating my body poorly. So there is um, 
connection with this. So we, we move on. If you go uh, to verses 18, uh, it talks about the differences of if, if you have a boil, meaning a bump, a painful bump. This is really what happened to um, Job. If you go back, God had allowed Satan to cover Job's body with boils. And when his friends were coming to talk to him and they're pronouncing judgment on him, what's really happening is they're waiting to see what happens to the boils. Now, all of that in Job was before any of this was really written down. So, um, but the practice was still, is God judging Job? Did, did Job commit some personal sin Why this is happening? So in it, it says, when the body has a boil on its skin and it is healed, meaning the boil goes away, but in the place of the boil, there's this white swelling or reddish white bright spot. So the, the bump has gone down. Now, sometimes when the bump goes down, the body is still trying to fix all the infection that was there. So it says, uh, you need to go to the priest and show it to the priest. The priest should look and behold, if it appears to be lower than the skin or deeper than the skin, and the hair on it is turned white, then the priest shall pronounce him unclean. It is the infection of leprosy and is broken out of the boil. But if the priest looks at it and there's no white hair in it, and it doesn't seem to be deeper in the skin, and it's fading, the priest shall isolate him for seven days. In that seven days, if it spreads, he's unclean. If it starts to does not spread, it's only the scar of the boil. So just giving some premise to this. Verse 24 begins a different process. If I burn myself, well, if you've ever burnt yourself, you know that the biggest danger is breaking the skin and infection can now come into the body. And whatever was burned has to really be painfully cleaned off, otherwise, it will cause deep infection. Um, if you've ever really burned yourself deep and you've had to have a doctor uh, clean that wound, you know the pain, uh, but it's a pain that has to be gone through. Otherwise, um, it will allow infection to invade your body. You don't really understand how much your skin protects you. So it says, if the body sustains in its skin a burn by fire, verse 24, the raw flesh of the burn it comes a bright spot, reddish white, and it goes through the description of that. It's broken out of the burn. Therefore, the priest shall pronounce him unclean in the infection uh, of leprosy. But if the priest looks at it and there's no white hair and no, it's not deeper than the skin, but it's dim, then isolate him for seven days. Let's see what happens. If it spreads further in the seven days, then he's unclean. If it gets better, it's just the scar from the burn. So give it time. Let's wait. Um, it says now, if a man or a woman has an infection where your hair is covering, or for a man where his beard is, um, then the priest shall look at the infection. And if it appears to be deeper than the skin, there's thin yellowing of the hair in it, then the priest shall pronounce him unclean. It is a scale. It is leprosy of the head or of the beard. But if there's a infection of the scale and it needed to appear to be no deeper than the skin, then there's no black hair in it, then the priest shall isolate the person with a scaly infection for seven days. The idea is ingrown hair sometimes can get infected. Most of the time the body will take care of this problem, but sometimes it's a outward sign of something deeper. Um, and he goes through that uh, all the way down to the end of verse 37. There's a way, if this is deeper, it's gonna show. Uh, wait seven days, then come back seven days further and let's evaluate it again. Now let's take a moment here and talk about this uh, illustration of leprosy being an illustration of sin. Uh, really, a, a, a man covered in leprosy coming out and telling every person they're unclean 
unclean, is a very good picture of the way every one of us are born spiritually. So if leprosy is this outward manifestation, that death is ravaging your body, physical death is eating you up, we're all born spiritually dead, eat up with spiritual leprosy, sin. And it is killing us. And this practicing righteousness is faith in God coming out and showing, revealing people, I am unclean because God has given me understanding. He's opened my blind eyes so that I can see really the spiritual condition that I was born in. But that yet in Christ, in this sanctification process, he is helping me. He's making me holy. And ultimately, glorification, all of this malady of spiritual leprosy, of sin, will be taken away. Remember, in justification, God opens up my eyes. My position has changed from being a blind child of Satan to now being a child of God who actually has eyes open to see the sin problem. Not just the sin in other people, but personal sin nature. God reveals that to us. But then we are in this process of sanctification where God is showing us real instances of this sin in us. And we are cutting it out. We're confessing and repenting of it. And we're moving forward, getting rid of that. That would be, I'm clean again. Then this process keeps going. But ultimately... I'm not fully clean until glorification when the presence of sin will be gone. My practices in sanctification are starting to be dealt with. And then this is the process that's pictured here in the text. Now, think about the comparisons. Leprosy, it starts out, it begins as nothing. It's just all of a sudden, one day there's something pops out of my skin. I can't see what's going on inwardly. And sin is the same way. I'm entertaining thoughts, and but when the action happens, boy, now it's evident. It, it seems painless at the beginning. It's just this little sore. Maybe I think, this is just a little lie. This is just a, a whatever. But it's a sign of something deeper. And the thing about leprosy is it grows really slow. Sometimes it will stop growing and then will return. Maybe I won't have a problem with certain sins for years and then all of a sudden, boom, I'm in the middle of war again on this problem. Sin, like leprosy, tends to numb our senses uh, where it becomes normal. Um, it doesn't cause me shame anymore. It doesn't cause me pain anymore. Uh, it, it, it's causing, though, even though I'm not shameful, it, it is causing decay and it is causing deformity, whether I even realize it or not. Um, it gives us a repulsive appearance. Sin does, um, just like leprosy. And the reality is that every one of us are born full-blown lepers spiritually, sinful to the core. And that's how we're born, because of Adam. But it doesn't take us long in our lives before the nature that is in us starts to break out. And we start to see not just my sinful nature, but my then my sinful actions and my choices being lived out. So just keep that in mind. We get to um, verse 40. Um, well, verse 38 and 39 are talking about a bright spot uh, on the skin. Really, eczema has broken out, and that's not a big problem. Uh, verse 40, if you have problems with balding, uh, it talks about balding can be just a natural thing, or there can be a deeper-seated problem. Um, it, it says... Uh, Verse 40, if a man loses the hair of his head, he is bald, but he's, he's, he's clean. Uh, if his head becomes bald to the front and sides, he is bald to the forehead, on the forehead, but he's clean. If on the bald head or the forehead there occurs a reddish-white infection, it is leprosy breaking out of his bald head or on his bald forehead. So again, 
um, kind of the idea, same thing that's given from verse 29, only this is, there's no hair covering this up. It still could be infected hair uh, trying to get out, or it could be a sign of something deeper. Now, in, in verse 45, it's talking about leprosy on clothing. Uh, th this isn't talking about if I have leprosy, I put some clothing on and uh, it gets a little bit of pus stain on it from the sore. That's not what this is talking about. Now, they're living in a day and age where clothing, people didn't have closets full of clothes. Okay, So they mostly had their clothes that they wore. And if they didn't get to wash them all the time, but... This is speaking of leprosy on the clothing, referring to mold, what we know as mold or mildew. Something on the clothing that is spreading and they could cause physical health problems to the person wearing it or the person coming into contact with it. And so he goes through all of that. Um, what to do? There's times when the whole garment needs to be burned. If, if you... If you have this garment and it has this spot on it and it's growing, wash it. If after you wash it, it still hasn't gotten any better, then you need to burn it. If it, when you wash it, it's gotten lighter but still grows, you still need to burn it. If it, if it basically uh, gets lighter and is not growing, then you still need to cut out that section and put a patch on there just to make sure that this is not a growing thing. Um, I skipped one part. Um, verse 45, it says, As for the leper who has the infection, his clothing shall be torn, and the hair of his head shall be uncovered, and he shall cover his mustache, and he shall cry out, Unclean, unclean. He shall remain unclean all the days during which he has an infection. He is unclean. He shall live alone. His dwelling shall be out side the camp. There's many instances of this. I think that uh, you can, a, a really good one is in 2 Kings chapter 7, the first 10 verses of this colony of lepers that, that, that it got to the place where they would group together people that were already infected and they would provide and, and but it was still a really difficult, difficult uh, place because they could not commune with God and they could not interact with God's community. Um, they were outcasts. And, um, but what happens when a leper dies? Um, the same thing that happens to anyone who dies. If they die in faith uh, the, in God, and in the Old Testament that was faith in looking forward to the Messiah, and they have obeyed God's commands in this by faith, then they would be saved. Uh, same thing that we say now with people who are diseased. Um, remember, disease here in a general way is just revealing to us the sin nature that we were born with. And throughout all of our lives is working its way out to the point of physical death. So we come to the end of this. Um, really the problem chapter, and I wish we could get into chapter 14, but we will tomorrow, where we can look at how do we get, what's the provision God makes to help get these things right? Again, coming to the priest, coming to the priest, coming to the priest. The, the priest makes uh, judgment calls. He's the judge. And I think all pointing to the fact that Jesus Christ, this is a fulfillment of the priestly office. He's the one who makes the judgment. We need a priest. We need the priest to make the judgment. And even in Matthew 7 where it says, Judge not lest you be judged. We're not the judges. Jesus is the judge. He's the one that lays out the standard. Now, what we do is we want to talk about his standard. We can talk about the judgment that he has, he has laid out. We want to apply the judgment to ourselves and then offer it to other people so that 
they can take the provision that God has given. This is a wonderful picture of salvation. First, of justification where our eyes are opened up to see the sin problem that we were born into. Then bringing us into the sanctification process where we are ritually being made clean. Ultimately looking forward to the time where we'll have absolute communion with God without the impedance of sin for eternity. What the Bible calls eternal life. Looking forward to that day. I hope you are too. May today be a banner day in our sanctification. Would you pray with me? Father, thank you. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your patience. Give us strength today to know you, to walk in your ways, but to carry out what you want us to carry out today for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen.